Hello, this is Dr. A with a Clean Chem Review. We're going to look at your micronutrients, your vitamins in nutrition assessment. Okay, vitamins have a wide range of functions in biological tissue. They serve as, as cofactors in many enzymatic reactions. Um, and vitamin deficiency is the inadequacy of vitamin cellular and activity levels, and it can be either for di from diet or intestinal absorption. So it could be from diet because a person is simply not eating enough fruits and vegetables and things that have high vitamin contents, um, or they could be, and then they have maybe some inflammatory bowel disorders and things that are causing them to not adequately absorb what they are eating or supplementing with even if they're taking a supplement if there's a lot of inflammation and problems in the gut it could be that it's simply not getting absorbed the common deficiency states seen are uh, vitamin c deficiency um, can be evidenced in the worst as curvy vitamin d deficiency in, in its worst is going to be evidenced in rickets um, Thiamine deficiency is going to be evidenced by beriberi niacin uh, deficiency uh, comes out as pellagra, and vitamin A deficiency is evidenced by night blindness, and um, folic acid deficiency as a megaloblastic anemia. So the variabilities in the clinical expression of, vi of vitamin abnormalities do result from, first of all, there are differences in specific causes, degree, and duration of that vitamin inadequacy. Uh, so it's just there's so many things that can cause different vitamin deficiencies and uh, it's just in it there's so many reactions and things that are, they are involved in that that really get in a true picture is hard simply by clinical expression uh, or you know a clinical assessment you can have the simultaneous presence of nutritional deficiencies so if you're not taking in enough vitamins maybe you're also not taking in enough protein for example um, and then you can also have an increased demand uh, from pregnancy, infection, or cancer, and it causes what used to be enough to not be enough. So diagnosis of um, vitamin deficiencies do require, you know, a dietary history, a physical, physical exam, but lab data is really where it's at. You know, how do you know unless you measure those levels? Your fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K, and your water-soluble vitamins are the B vitamins that are thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, B6, B12, and biotin, and uh, folate, and then vitamin C. All right, let's start with the fat soluble ones. So, vitamin A, also known as retinol, uh, sources of vitamin A are going to be uh, animal products and pigmented fruits and vegetables, so especially. Uh, in the red and orange family, so your carrots and sweet potatoes and stuff like that. It's worth noting that the ones that in vegetables are present as beta carotene, and beta carotene has to be converted to retinol, um, and thyroid function has to be adequate for that to happen. Whereas the retinol that is in animal products is just straight up as uh, retinol, and it can be absorbed and it's in the right form right away. The function, vitamin A uh, functions in vision, so it helps you see, um, and um, it's in the retina, which is also where you get retinol. Um, also cellular differentiation, growth, and reproduction, so beyond vision, obviously, but also thyroid and immune system function. It has roles all over the body, and vitamin A actually usually binds on uh, straight onto your DNA and uh, it activates genes and turns genes on and off and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So uh, one of the first effects of deficiencies, you're going to see night blindness. Uh, so especially um, some people that like are bothered by driving at night and stuff like that, um, that could be a sign of vitamin A deficiency. Uh, and of course, you can also, at the worst, get total blindness. Uh, the lab methods for a vitamin A assessment is going to be high performance liquid chromatography, usually sent out to a reference lab, and the specimen has to be protected from light after collection. Vitamin E, also known as tocopherol, um, the source is going to be from certain vegetable oils, leafy vegetables, egg yolks, and legumes, also nuts and seeds. Uh, it is an antioxidant, it's very strong antioxidants, and it strengthens the cell membrane. Um, if you have a deficiency of vitamin E, you'll see hemolytic anemia. 
Um, you can also do vitamin E levels by high performance of the chromatography, and it also needs to be protected from light after collection. Vitamin D, uh, the sunshine vitamin, so it requires sunlight. So you actually manufacture vitamin D from cholesterol in your skin, but you have to have adequate skin exposure and um, like the, the sun, it's it, you're really better at making it during the summer and stuff where the sun rays are like coming straight down and pretty more intense uh and it's harder for you for the body to manufacture vitamin d in the winter time when the sun rays are at a bigger angle uh well that lower angle at um and um anyway you just and you're not outside as much because it's cold and stuff like that so um the food supply has fortified milk and butter and stuff with vitamin D. Find it in egg yolks, liver, because you store vitamin D in the liver. Sardines, herring, tuna, salmon, and irradiated foods have vitamin D. You can also supplement for those if needed, um, if there's a vitamin D deficiency. Um, it is needed for proper skeleton formation and mineral homeostasis. So it uh, affects calcium and phosphorus homeostasis. There's a whole video on that. Um, but it also affects immune and thyroid function. So you need enough vitamin D for your thyroid to work adequately and your immune system to work adequately. And uh, low levels of vitamin D have been associated with uh, things as uh, autoimmunity, hay fever, asthma, allergies, that kind of stuff. Too. Uh, so the worst effect of deficiency, especially in growing children, is going to be rickets, where uh, it, it affects the skeleton formation and the legs, and they're going to have bowed legs. Uh, and then osteomalacia would be bone softening, uh, and that would be from, you know, the lack of calcium and phosphorus, uh, which, again, you need vitamin D to absorb uh, enough calcium and uh, for it to enter your body so that you can have four strong bones. The lab method, so the 25 hydroxy vitamin D testing is uh, become really common in many clinical laboratories because there is such a widespread deficiency of vitamin D in the population. Um, so there are numerous immunoassays available, um, but your immunoassays can only measure the total vitamin D. If you want to measure individual components of vitamin D, so vitamin D2 or D3, you need to do... Um, LCMS, so so that's liquid chromatography, tandem mass spec, and um, one two five dihydroxy vitamin D testing is not routinely done in clinical labs, and it is used primarily by endocrinologists and nephrologists. So one two five dihydroxy vitamin D is actually the activated form of vitamin D. So once vitamin D is made into your skin, it actually needs to go to the liver to undergo one transformation into the kidneys to undergo a second one. Once it's made it through the kidneys, it is 125-dihydroxy vitamin D. But uh, again, uh, that's more like specialized testing. So doing the 25-OH vitamin D levels can tell you whether your patient is deficient or not. Vitamin K. So the source of vitamin K is going to be cabbage, cauliflower, spinach, pork, liver, and soybeans. Your little E. coli bacteria in your gut are <coughs> really good at making vitamin K, from, uh, especially if you eat a lot of leafy greens and stuff. Um, it is used in the formation of prothrombin, <coughs> sorry, and at least five other coagulation proteins, including factors 7, 9, 10 proteins C and S. So vitamin K is essential for clotting, for adequate clotting. And if you don't have enough, then you're going to have lack of clotting. You're going to have bleeding problems. Uh, and deficiencies are seen with antibiotic use, which then makes sense because um, in, with the overuse or use of antibiotics, you're killing some of your normal flora in your gut, including the friendly E. coli that is normally making all your vitamin K. The lab methods, so um, the assay is commonly ordered when attempting to discover the source of a bleeding episode. Um, again, their vitamin K levels are performed mainly in reference labs, and um, they're ordered when the vitamin K dependent factors levels are normal and the patient is still uh, having a bleeding problem. All right, so next uh, we're going to talk about the water-soluble vitamins, and we're going to start with all the B vitamins. So we have thiamine is B1. It's found in yeast, liver, oatmeal, brown rice, and whole grain flours. It is a coenzyme in decarboxylation reactions. 
if there is deficiency, you will see beriberi, um, and it can found is found in the U.S. mostly among people with chronic alcoholism. The lab method is going to be high performance liquid liquid chromatography or liquid chromatography tend to mass spec, and you need to protect a specimen from light. Uh, then we have riboflavin, which is B2. It's found in milk, liver, eggs, meats, leafy vegetables. Uh, it is a component of two coenzymes that catalyze oxidation reduction reactions. And so, again, these guys, all of these vitamins, they don't just work in one enzymatic reactions. They work in hundreds of enzymatic reactions all throughout the body. So uh, the predominant effect of a deficiency is going to be reduced glutathione reductase activity. Glutathione is one of your master antioxidants. You need glutathione to detoxify a lot of things. Um, the lab method is going to be high performance liquid chromatography or liquid chromatography tandem mass spec, and of course you need to protect it from light. Um, peroxidine is B6. Uh, the sources are meat, poultry, fish, potatoes, and vegetables. So uh, a good old stew meat and vegetable kind of uh, dish there on the, in the photo. Um, so it balances sodium and potassium. It promotes this red blood cell formation. Uh, if you don't have enough B6, you will see hyperhomocysteinemia, which is not good. And lab methods are still the same, HPLC or LCMSMS, protect from light. Niacin, also known as B3. Uh, it is from the conversion of dietary tryptophan. Uh, tryptophan is an amino acid that's found predominantly in uh, things like uh, poultry, so turkey, chicken, and all that kind of stuff. Tryptophan is your building block for uh, serotonin and melatonin and all that kind of stuff. Um, it is also um, B, niacin, which is B3, is also a component of two enzymes, NAD and AD, NADP, which are essential for like so many things, especially uh, uh, energy production, ADP production and stuff. Uh, if you have a deficiency, you have flagra, and it's a clinical syndrome that results from niacin deficiency, and you see di diarrhea, dementia, dermatitis, and death. And lab methods still the same: HPLC, liquid chromatography, tannin mass spec, protect all these specimens from light. Folate uh, is found in green leafy vegetables fruits, organ meats, and yeast. Uh, it is a coenzyme that's involved in one carbon transfer reactions in the synthesis of DNA and RNA. Uh, the effect of deficiency, uh, you'll see megaloblastic anemias, but also uh, neurologic symptoms, numbness and tingling in the limbs and memory loss and even psychosis. And you need adequate folate in uh, the early days of pregnancy uh, to properly form uh, the, the embryo and then fetus. Um, vitamin B12 deficiency can lead to folic acid deficiency. Next you have vitamin B12, which is cyanocobalamin. Um, the sources are meat, eggs, and milk. It is a coenzyme for hematopoiesis and fatty acid metabolism, meaning it helps you make red cells and stuff, right? Um, and the effect of deficiency is the same as folate. You can have a megaloblastic anemia, but also combined system disorders, neurologic disorders, and stuff like that. So folate and B12 both have the same kind of similar kind of roles. Um, however, in B12, um, if a patient uh, develops pernicious anemia, which is an autoimmune disease where you have no intrinsic factor, um, the lack of intrinsic factor um, keeps the person from absorbing B12 from their diet. And so you have to have intrinsic factor uh, to absorb B12. And uh, if that is not present, then it doesn't matter how much B12 you supplement, how much meat, eggs, and milk they eat. It's just they're just not going to absorb it. And so for these patients, um, they either need like a sublingual B12 that dissolves straight into the bloodstream or they need B12 shots. The next one is biotin. Uh, it's B7. I found in numerous foods. It is a coenzyme for the transport of carboxyl units and tissue. It has key roles in gluconeogenesis, lipogenesis, and fatty acid synthesis. Um, if you don't have enough, you're going to see decreased appetite and growth. Um, lab methods are still the same, HPLC and LCMSMS, and protect from light. 
pantothenic acid is B5. It is also found in a variety of foods, but liver, other organ meats, milk, eggs, peanut, legumes, mushrooms, salmon, and whole grains have it. It is a growth factor. Um, deficiencies are exceptionally rare because it is found in so many foods. Um, and a lab method is still the same, HPLC and LCMSMS, protect from light. Um, and then we're getting to the last. Uh, now we have ascorbic acid versus vitamin C. Uh, the sources are uh, citrus fruits and vegetables, especially all the yellow orange and all that kind of stuff. Um, it uh, functions in the formation and stabilization of collagen. You have collagen all over your body, so you need adequate vitamin C to make collagen. It increases the absorption of certain minerals, such as iron. Uh, so for example, if you need to be on iron supplements, it's good to take it with it, like citrus juice, like an orange juice. It is a powerful water soluble antioxidant also. Um, can be really good uh, for your immune system when you're sick also. The effect of deficiencies can be scurvy, scurvy which is a hemorrhagic disorder, uh, including swollen, bleeding gums, and impaired wound healing and anemia. And the lab methods again, vitamin C has to be protected from light and liquid chromatography, chem and mass spec is currently the method uh, that's used by reference lab. And uh, carnitine is the last one. Um, so the sources are uh, meat, poultry, fish, and dairy product products of carn carno for uh, meat for uh, flesh carnitine, right? And uh, it facilitates the entry of long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria for oxidation and energy production. So you need carnitine to make energy. Uh, and uh, deficiency, you will see muscle weakness and fatigue. And that is it for your vitamins.